Good morning. It's two minute mark. Nobody's popped in here yet in the live chat, but I'm just gonna go ahead and get ready and rock and roll into my intro for this 1963 Hall of Fame inductee video series. Today we have Elmer Flick. Elmer Flick is our only Hall of Famer inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1963. Our put cards in my car with our Posada. How are you doing? You are the first in the live chat today. Popping in, chiming in. Let me get you into the wheel of names for your entry. We'll see if anybody else pops in here quickly with you. If not, you will be the sole entry into my wheel of names today. So, boom, boom, boom. Ba -da -da -da. All right, let me add you in here. You got another entry into the June free drawing, the free giveaway for June. Let me go ahead and save my wheel of names here. Uh, I'm doing good. It's a beautiful Friday morning here in Stockton, California. That's good. It's a wet and rainy day here in the pacific northwest <laughs> but hopefully you're having a good start to your friday there robert and getting ready to have an exciting weekend the, this sunday is a special day in my life <clears throat> because it was 42 years ago this sunday that i joined the united states navy I joined on Flag Day of 1978. Flag Day of 1978 is when I signed up and went to basic training. So that's why June 14th Flag Day is a special day for me. But yeah, going into the intro for our video today, of course, the only Hall of Famer is Elmer Flick. He's pictured here. I don't have any of his baseball cards. I'm per I don't even know for sure. Sometimes you wonder, do some of these Hall of Famers even have baseball cards as we go back in time? Going back to the older Hall of Famers as we s continue backwards uh, in our series here. And then after that, we will have a family mail call. I have one family mail call package from Clay Don't Play. I participated in one of his sales and so I'm going to uh, open his package up and share what I got from his sale. And then I do have mystery packs still available. Okay, um, I do have to sell out on these last five. That's why I gave it a whole month um, before I come out with my 2020 Series 1 uh, red, white and blue for the 4th of July, which is rapidly approaching. We've got uh, probably about three and a half, four weeks to go before our 4th of July sale. And I am each and every day, I'm working a little bit more on the packages and the cards that go into that uh, product. And as the title of this video says, I do have five mystery packs for sale. I think in the title it says packy. I gotta go and edit the title. Five mystery packs for sale, okay? So um, we'll do that when we get to that point in the stream. But other than that, we've got about six minutes. I know uh, sometimes I pop in here early, Robert. I know you're probably at work right now. I know you pop into the chat when you can and when you're able to. Uh, just kind of listening in the background as you're, you're working at work. But it's nice to know it's a nice, beautiful Friday morning there. In Stockton, California. So, other than that, um, trying to think what else. Usually, we usually I have at least one or two more people than just you in here, Robert. But that's okay. I guess it makes up for yesterday having getting close to almost twenty people in my live stream. It was nice having coffee and jam with Chris and their their group as she was wrapping up her live stream and. Uh, they came over and followed her here to uh, my stream. They kind of, back in the day when people would raid other people's channels, 
Uh, you don't see that happening too often anymore, except for when somebody's trying to grow a channel. But um, I did appreciate all the support and the love that I received yesterday in the stream. So um, that is a recap of what um, we are doing today. Um, and I will be doing the Hall of Fame induction uh, video series a little bit more. I'm going to add in the uh, Elmer Flick. Matter of fact, let me get that added on here. Elmer Flick onto my biography list here. So it will be three different players that I've done biographies for um, this, this week. Um, let me get in here and da da da. Got to add him right after this one. Oh, oh this one. There. Sorry, I got to add Elmer into my biography list here and take him off the list here, saying that I did his biography. That way it stands out and I know it is done. Let me save this file here. Also. Oh, okay. NCC Baseball is in the house. How you doing there, NCC Baseball? Nice to have you pop into the stream today. Appreciate you being here. Now it's not just me and Cards in My Car with our Posada, but NCC has joined us. We're probably just popping in to say hi. NCC is probably at work still. But that is okay. So let me get my other computer back into the stream here. Don't forget my thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thummies up for me. <laughs> All right. So at least for, for a while there, I thought maybe just Robert Posada was going to be here with me as I get into, I know, who knows anything about Elmer Flick? Well, we're going to learn something about him today and why he made it into the Hall of Fame and why he was the only Hall of Fame inductee for 1963. We've got about two more minutes to go here and we'll get into the content at hand. So hopefully you guys are getting ready. I'm still... Still trying to figure out what to do tomorrow. Um, probably if nothing pops into my head. Uh, hmm, I'm still thinking. I don't know. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. <laughs> but if anybody has any suggestions on something you'd like to see me do in the channel. Or something you'd... Because I'm, I'm, I'm like having one of those uh, mental blanks for tomorrow. I'm having a mental blank. But uh, other than that, again, just trying to sell these last five uh, preview mystery packs for my grand production. Um, I'm battling it out with uh, uh, different people that are helping me in the production line. Uh, with uh, what we're going to do with the 2020 uh, Series 1 Red, White, and Blue Mystery Packs that we'll be putting up for sale. You can reserve a spot in that Red, White, and Blue Mystery Pack sale for July 4th. If you so desire, just tell me the numbers. Uh, when I get to the end of the stream here, I'll go through and show you um, what numbers have been chosen already. Okay. I will show you what, what numbers have been chosen so that you'll have an idea on everything that's encompassing there. But I will show you that at the end of the stream. And we do have 10.30 here now, so I'm going to get into my content at hand for Elmer Flick. All right, Elmer Flick. All right. Our only inductee for 1963, and then we will continue on through today's programming. 
All right, so Elmer Flick, Elmer Harrison Flick, inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1963. His primary team was the Cleveland Indians. Where's Robert Hone? Why is Robert not in here yet? <laughs> this is one of his, one of his favorite teams. Uh, his primary position, of course, is a right fielder. So in 1891, that's probably why not too many people heard of him. He's an old timer. A 15 year old Elmer Flick went down to the train station to give his hometown semi professional baseball team in Bedford, Ohio, a send off. With the train ready to leave and only eight players present, someone asked the youngster to join them. Despite being barefoot, Flick jumped at the opportunity, and a Hall of Fame career began. Born on January 11, 1876, in Bedford, Flick starred as a catcher for his high school team, but didn't join real organized baseball until he made his debut with a team in Youngston, Ohio in 1896. My first game for Youngston, I hit a ninth inning homer with one on to win 2-1, to one, said Flick. That's when they first started to call me Elmer Flick, the demon of the stick. After one more season in the minor leagues, Flick was brought up to the Phillies in 1898, but was largely expected to come off the bench because of Philadelphia's veteran outfield. Flick is going to make the outfielders hustle to hold their positions, said Francis Richer, a Philadelphia writer. He is the fastest and most promising youngston, youngster the Phillies have ever had. On April 26, future Hall of Fame outfielder Sam Thompson went down with an injury. Flick entered the game, recorded two hits, and began his 13-year career. In four full seasons with the Phillies, Flick hit 338 with a career best of 367 in 1900. Following the 1901 season, Flick was one of several National League players who jumped to the year-old American League. He appeared in 11 games for the Philadelphia Athletics that spring, but was prohibited from playing anymore when the Pennsylvania Supreme Court ruled that any players under contract to the Phillies could not play for another team. Flick, however, along with teammate and future Hall of Famer Nat Lajoy, circumvented the order by signing with the American League's Cleveland Naps. The court order could not be enforced outside of Pennsylvania, so Flick and Lajoy were eligible to play for the Naps, except when Cleveland traveled to Philadelphia. During those games, Flick and Lajoy took a paid vacation. Flick played the rest of his career in Cleveland, where he led the league in stolen bases twice and triples three times. He also won the batting title in 1905. Illness slowed Flick's career from 1908 to 1910, and he played his last two seasons of professional ball in Toledo, Ohio in 1911 and 1912. He finished his major league career with 1,752 hits, 268 doubles, 164 triples, and 330 stolen bases. Flick was elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1963. At 87 years old, at the time of his election, Flick became the oldest living player to earn enshrinement in Cooperstown. Flick passed away on January 9, 1971. So Flick reported with a bat that he had turned out for himself on a leave and kept in a canvas bag, said Lee Allen. So for his career stats and career at a glance, he did play in 1,483 games. He had 5,597 at-bats, 950 runs scored, 1,752 hits, 268 doubles, 164 triples, 48 home runs, 756 RBIs, 330 stolen bases, 597 walks. He had a batting average of 313, an OPS of 384, an on-base percentage of 389, and a slugging percentage of 445. He played for the Philadelphia Phillies from 1898 to 1902, and then he Played with the Cleveland Indians from 1902 to 1910. 
So there you have it, the Hall of Fame induction for Elmer Fleck, the only inductee for 1963. All right, so let's move on now to the second part of his uh, Hall of Fame uh, induction video series for today, and that is Elmer Flick's biography. Okay, once again, Elmer Harrison Flick, born January 11th, 1876, and passed away on January 9th. 1971. He was an American professional baseball outfielder who played in Major League Baseball from 1898 to 1910 for the Philadelphia Phillies, the Philadelphia Athletics, and the Cleveland Bronco Naps. In 1,483 career games, Flick recorded a 313 batting average while accumulating 164 triples, 1,752 hits, 330 stolen bases, 756 runs batted in. He was elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1963. Flick began his career in semi-professional baseball and played in minor league baseball for two years. He was noticed by George Stallings, the manager of the Phillies, who signed Flick as a reserve outfielder. Flick was pressed into a starting role in 1898 when an injury forced another player to retire. He excelled as a starter. Flick jumped to the athletics in 1902, but a court injunction prevented him from playing in Pennsylvania. He joined the Naps, where he continued to play for the remainder of his major league career, which was curtailed by a stomach ailment. Flick was known predominantly for his solid batting and speed. He led the National League in RBIs in 1900 and led the American leg in stolen bases in 1904, 1906, and in batting average in 1905. As far as his early life, we pop in the chat, sorry about that. Um, and then, uh, oh, NCC Baseball, hey. Cardinals fan, 1990 is in the house. Thanks for stopping by there, Cardinals fan. Appreciate you being here today with us. Not as busy as it was yesterday. But as far as his early life, Flick was born on January 11, 1876. Uh, the third of five children of Zachary and Mary Flick on the family farm in Bedford, Ohio. His father was a farmer and mechanic who served in the American Civil War. Flick attended Bedford High School, where he played catcher on the school's baseball team. He also played American football, wrestled, and boxed. Flick entered semi-professional baseball by chance when he was 15 years old. He was at a train station to support the local baseball team as it left for a road trip. Only eight of the team's players showed up at the station, so Flick was recruited to go on the trip with the team. Though Flick did not have a uniform or shoes, he hit well in both games of the doubleheader. Though Bedford lost both games, he joined Bedford, the Bedford team on a regular basis and continued to play semi-pro baseball throughout his teenage years. Get a sip of water real quick here. as far as his professional career when he started with the minor league baseball. In 1896, the manager of the Youngstown Puddlers of the Interstate League signed Flick. Because the team had an established catcher, Flick played in the outfield, where he struggled to learn the position. In 31 games, Flick had an 826 fielding percentage. However, Flick had a strong performance offensively using his father's leave. Flick crafted his own baseball bat, which he used to hit for a 438 batting average. The next year, Flick played for the Dayton Old Soldiers, also in the Interstate League as their regular left fielder. His defense improved as he compiled a 921 fielding percentage, and he batted 386. He also led the league with 20 triples and 295 total bases. 
Then we continue on to his Major League Baseball. George Stallings, the manager of the Philadelphia Phillies of the National League, noticed Flick while he played for Dayton. Stallings signed Flick to the Phillies to serve as a reserve outfielder for the team in 1898 season. Starting outfielder Sam Thompson injured his back after six games, forcing Stallings to play Flick. In his debut game, Flick went two for three with two singles against Fred Col- Claudbans. Thompson returned to the team briefly, but injured his back and announced his retirement in May, allowing Flick to play regularly. Flick proved himself a capable big leaguer, batting 302 with 8 home runs, 13 triples, and 81 runs batted in. In the 1899 season, he batted 342 with 98 runs scored and 98 RBIs. However, he suffered a serious knee injury in August and re-injured the knee when he returned to the game too quickly. Before the 1900 season, Philadelphia stars Napoleon Lejoy and Ed Delahante held out for renewing their contracts with the team. Other members of the team had grown disgruntled amid talk of a revival of the American Association. Flick and several other players began to talk about not returning to the team the next year. The Philadelphia Inquirer reported that Flick's father was the chair business in Cleveland and that he might require Flick's help with the business. Flick agreed to a contract extension before the season started. Later and and then that year he led the National League with 110 RBIs. All right, he finished his second in the National League with a 367 batting average and a 545 slugging percentage, 11 home runs, 59 extra base hits and 297 total bases. He also engaged in a fist fight with La Jolla that caused La Jolla to miss five weeks due to a broken thumb. The f- race for the batting title came down to the end of the season. The title winner, Honus Wagner, later said, I've had a lot of thrills, but don't think I was ever happier than 1900 when I won the batting title. Elmer Flick to the last day of the season for that title. Flick was one of many star National League players who jumped to the f- fledging American League after the 1901 season, playing for the Crosstown Philadelphia Athletics. Flick played in 11 games for the Athletics before the Phillies obtained an injunction from the Pennsylvania Supreme Court, prohibiting any player under contract with the Phillies from playing for another team. Though this injunction injunction named La Jolla, Bill Bernhardt, and Chick Fraser only. It still applied to Flick as well. As a recourse, Flick and teammate LaHoy signed instead with the Cleveland Naps, as the Pennsylvania injunction could not be enforced in Ohio. The two players often traveled separately from their teammates for the next year, never setting foot in Pennsylvania in order to avoid a subpoena. Flick spent the remainder of his career in Cleveland, and the contract dispute was resolved when the Ligs made peace in September 1903 with the National Agreement. On July 6, 1902, Flick hit three triples in one game between 1900 and 2010. 49 players accomplished that feat. By early 1904, Flick did not want to re-sign with Cleveland for the offered <coughs> hmm, excuse me, uh, $2,500, which would equate to about $71,139 in today's dollars. Plans were being made to run a railroad through a corner of Flick's farm, and Flick hoped to hire some of his horses Uh, to the construction team. After July 4th, my farm work will be along so that I will be able to give considerable attention to independent ball, he said. All right. Uh, Flick did not return to Cleveland for the 1904 season. That year, Flick 
tied teammate Harry Bay for the league with 38 stolen bases. Flick was the American League batting champion in the 1905 season with a 308 average. Only Carl Yastrzemski, who won the batting title with a 301 average in 1968 led the league with a lower average. Flick also led the league with a 462 slugging percentage and 18 triples in 1905. His 383 on base percentage trailed only uh, Topsy Hartzell during a 1905 game. Cleveland fielders were charged with seven errors in a single inning, but Flick committed only one of the errors. In the 1906 season, Flick played a league-leading 157 games. He led the league with 700 plate appearances, 624 at-bats, 98 runs scored, 22 triples, and 39 stolen bases, tied with John Anderson. However, Flick was said to be dissatisfied with the team, and the Naps considered trading him to the Detroit Tigers for Matty McIntyre. Before the 1907 season, the Naps turned down a trade with the Tigers, which could have exchanged Flick for the 21-year-old Ty Cobb, Hughie Jennings, the Tigers' manager, was tired of dealing with Cobb's abrasive behavior. The Naps refused to part with Fleck, even in exchange for Cobb. They countered with uh, Bunk Congalton, but the Tigers declined. Flick had been holding out, but he signed a few days after the proposed trade. After Cobb was nearly traded away, Jennings attempted to repair the difficult relationship between Cobb and the other Detroit players. Cobb is too good a hitter to let get away. When a little diplomacy will get the boys together, Jennings said. In the 1907 season, Flick again led the league with 18 triples. However, baseball took its toll on Flick before the 1907 season. He considered retiring to pursue other business opportunities. By 1908, he developed stomach problems, and Cleveland personnel initially said that the illness was related to Flick's overeating. He left training camp that year complaining of train sickness and returned home to Cleveland. He missed the majority of the 1908 season, playing in only nine games. He missed the beginning of the 1909 season as well, as a doctor recommended Flick have his appendix removed. Now weighing 130 pounds, Flick was afraid of a bad outcome from the surgery, which was a significant risk at the time. He kept his appendix and played in 66 games, batting 255. He played in in another 24 games in the 1910 season before he was again sidelined by his stomach ailment. The Naps acquired shoeless Joe Jackson from the Athletics in a trade and had him replace Flick in the lineup. In July 1910, the Naps sold Flick to the Kansas City Blues of the American Association, but Flick refused to report to Kansas City, which canceled the transaction. Popping that chat here nothing new going on there so we can go on and finish the biography portion of uh, Elmer Flick all right so later in his career in 1911 Flick looked to continue his career unable to find a major league team willing to sign him he returned to the minor leagues the Toledo Mud Hens of the American Association purchased him from Cleveland. Flick played for Toledo in 1911 and 1912. He batted 326 in the 1911 season and 262 in the 1912 season, but did not hit for power. The Mud Hens released him at the end of the 1912 season. He retired from professional baseball after being released by Toledo. Though he briefly played as a second baseman for a local amateur team in Bedford in 1914, Flick retired without playing in a World Series as of 2003. There were six Hall of Famers without a World Series appearance who played most of their careers after 1903. Three of them, Flick, Lajoy, or Lahoy, and Addie Joss played together with Cleveland from 1902 to 1910. 
His later life, returning to Bedford, Flick hunted, raised horses, built buildings, and became involved in selling real estate. He also scouted for Cleveland. Only four 19th century baseball players, <clears throat> including Flick, were still alive in 1970. In his latter years, Flick still answered requests for autographs from his fans. Proud of his longevity, Flick often competed completed autographs by writing the date and his age above the underneath of his signature. Flick was married to Rosa Ella Negates. The couple had five daughters. Flick died of congestive heart failure in 1971 at the age of 94 in his hometown of Bedford. He had also suffered from mycosis fungoids. All right. His honors when uh, Cobb died in 1961, stories written about him mention the attempted trade between Cleveland and Detroit, which revived interest in Flick. Flick was inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1963 after being unanimously elected by the Veterans Committee. When he received the call from Branch Rickey that he had been selected, Frick did not believe Rickey at first. He said, that he did not even realize he was being considered for election at the time. Flick's family had to convince him that the call was real. He was the oldest living inductee in Hall of Fame history. At his induction, the 87-year-old Flick said, This is a bigger day than I've ever had before. I'm not going to find the words to explain how I feel. Subsequent to his induction, writers have questioned the validity of Flick's Hall of Fame membership. James Vale characterized Flick and three other Hall of Famers as some of the most dubious BC choices ever. Uh, David Fleets wrote that Ricky's influence on the Veterans Committee led to Flick's election, as Ricky was the only committee member who had seen Flick play. Uh, author Robert E. Kelly pointed out that Flick's career was relatively short and that stronger candidates from Flick's era, such as Sherry McGee, had not been inducted. Flick was enshrined in the Greater Cleveland Sports Hall of Fame in 1977 and the Ohio Baseball Hall of Fame in 1987. A statue of Flick's likeness was created to be placed in Bedford. It was funded by donations and was ultimately Dedicated on September 2013, Mike Hargrove was among the baseball figures who attended the dedication ceremony. So there you have it. Also included in today's content, the biography of Elmer Harrison Flick. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that today. Even though we only have a few people in the stream, um... Hopefully you guys are having a good Friday. <laughs> that didn't come out right. Hopefully you're having a great end of your week on this Friday. How's that sound? Sorry about that. But um, other than that, uh, we do have four people watching. So we do have a few people in here. I'm going to uh, refresh my chat. Move this out of the way real quick. Um buy that in my Hall of Fame binder, the postcard there. All right, again, we do have mystery packs. I know there's not a lot of, pe lot of people here, and uh, we'll see. I, we'll see what, what, what I'll try and do for tomorrow. But other than that, um, let's get rolling here. Okay. So I'm going to move this out of the way for now, but um, I'll probably leave this down here for the moment. Let me get some stands ready to show the cards I got from, uh, let's see here. Let's see if I can, let's see, boom, boom, boom. If I put that there, maybe I can kind of leave these halfway sort of up here. I have a spot to put the, the, the cards that we get from Clay Don't Play's uh, family mail call package here. I think I can probably I think I could almost get it here. 
trying to see if I can squeeze everything in here. Here, let me move this over a little bit. There. I think that way you guys can see that information for the mystery packs that I do have for sale. If anybody is interested in that, um, you can always just let me know in the chat. But without further ado, we're going to go, we're going to move into our part two of today's stream, which will be um, this pack, Valley Milk Call package from, you can see it there, Clay Don't Play. If you're wondering who he is, if you haven't seen him in your streams yet, um, you can go to, there is a link in the description of this video for his channel. Okay, so this will be the package I will open. Pretty, pretty well stuffed and full. I think I remember some of the stuff I bought from Clay. Uh, dun, dun, dun. Uh, let me just set it up here. Oh, it definitely uh, has it taped up very, very well. That's for sure. <clears throat> he actually made it into a first class package he just he kind of just made it into uh, <clears throat> the realm of being a first class package because it did get up to 12 12 ounces 12 ounces you can go up to 13 ounces on a first class package before you have to go up into and then it's sometimes cheaper to just go with uh, priority mail <clears throat> I'm seeing if I could try and salvage this bag here to reuse it. I do like reusing my packaging material, if possible. If possible. Ah, oh boy. Ah, okay. Sticky packaging there clay but that's okay <laughs> I might still be able to reuse it I think so I think so oh my word and then oh wow he does package things pretty 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 well you'll see when, you, when if I can get this out of here <clears throat> oh my word There we go. Oh my word. Okay, there we go. Got it out of the bag. Thanks, Sir Clay. <laughs> Definitely bundled up very well. He does use the best tape in the world, the blue tape, which I think, as long as it's not sticking to the cardboard, I don't like going to buy these. So I'll reuse blue tape as with as much use as I can get out of it. So yes, I know it takes longer. Everybody on their channel is always about speed. I'm more like uh, Robert Home made it. Hello boys, I'm back. Thanks there, Robert. You missed your... You're going to have to watch the replay. This was... I did one of your... Uh, a Hall of Famer that was... Uh, played with the Cleveland Indians. And you probably cut his grass too. Elmer Flick. Remember El, Elmer Flick there? I know it's even before... Wait, no. Well, actually, no. Robert might have been around the time of Elmer Flick. Because he didn't die until... What was it? The 19, 1971 or something? So maybe uh, maybe Robert knew who Elmer Flick is. Did you know Elmer Flick there, there Robert? Boom, look at this. I like this. Let's see what we got here. Oh, that's right. I remember too. There's some other cards in here too that I want to highlight in one of my products coming up soon here. 
Um, let's see if I can, yeah, I can set that there for now. Maybe I'll use that for something. But we're going to go through, it looks like, uh, I think I got some gold cards here, some foil cards here, 2020. Um, that's one of my side sets. I'm trying to see how many, uh, if I can get a complete 350 card collection of the foil cards. That would be awesome. Honey, do list and never seems to get smaller. Oh, I know the feeling there. Don't let the cat out of the bag, but I like when it rains. I don't have to do any yard work. <laughs> Not that I don't like yard work. It's just, it gives me a little break. Then, then I can work on my cards more. Uh-oh. I got the, oh, shoot. I, I did that wrong, didn't I? Well, you know what, here. Let's get some of these. I think I got one of my cards. Just got stuck there on on the lip of the, the team bag there. <laughs> on the lip of the team bag. All right. Here, let me just do this real quick. All right, I'm going to get this tack right here. Let me open up this. Oh, there we go. USA Baseball. Okay. All right. Let me see if I can. Uh, I just back. Oh, oh, there we go. Boom, boom, boom. All right. Let me just put these here. Oh, okay. Put these guys right here for now. Got a few more gold cards here. Oh, I see what he did. He kind of put these in separate, in a, another separate bag to separate from the USA baseball cards. All right, so of course that is another one of the sets I'm finishing or working on too is the 2020, uh, the 2020 gold cards. So we got Enrique Hernandez here. Enrique Hernandez. We got uh, Gregory Polanco with the Pirates. We got uh, Jose Urena with the Marlins. We got Jeff Summer Zija with the Giants. We got a Jake Lamb with the Arizona Diamondback. Shout out to Kevin's Ministries and more. We got um, Oscar Mercado with the Cleveland Indians. We've got Dansby Swanson. Sorry, I was cutting the cards off. Why didn't you guys tell me? You probably did. Like when it rains, laugh out loud. Sure did. He was a bad tipper. Really? When you cut his grass, he didn't tip you good there, Robert. Oh, my word. Dansby Swanson with the Atlanta Braves. There we go. Max Scherzer. Max Scherzer, World Series highlight card. Um, uh, Freddie Peralta with the Milwaukee Brewers. Uh, Matt Strom with the San Diego Padres. Uh... Kyle Hendricks with the Chicago Cubs. Uh, Robinson Cano with the New York Mets. He used to be a Seattle Mariner back in the day. And Josh Van Meter with the Cincinnati Reds. Boom, boom, boom. See, I think I got a bunch of gold cards. Oh, these are the foil cards. These are the foil cards now. Okay, so those were the gold cards that I got from them, the 2020s, and these are just the, the foil cards. Okay, so these are all the rainbow foil cards. I'm trying to see how many in that set I can get, how many in this set I'm getting that I can try and get, and then I'm working on the uh, opening day error cards. That's what I call them, opening day error cards. Hint, hint. <laughs> so, um... 
But there we go here. So we've got uh, Javier Baez with the Cubs. Uh, Trey Turner. Let's see. Sorry about that. I keep bumping into that stack there. But... All right. So Trey Turner with the Washington Nationals. Actually, here it's going to work out better. Here, why don't I put these gold cards back here? Get my scissors out of the way here. And then put these here. Javier Baez here. Trey Turner here. We got the Alex Young with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Uh, rookie card. Then we've got Johnny Cuto with the San Francisco Giants. Try and get the light to hit it right so you can see the, these are the rainbows. Uh, Jesse Winkler with the Cincinnati Reds. We got Marco Gonzalez with the Seattle Mariners. Marco Gonzalez, one of our up-and-coming awesome pitchers. He'll, I think he'll be improving through time along with uh, Yusei Kukuchi. So we do got two pretty good starters now. Uh, Cleveland Indians team card. We got the Jacoby Jones with the Detroit Tigers. We got Jose Berrios with the Minnesota Twins. We've got uh, uh, Jameson Talion with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Um, Lewis Brinson with the Miami Marlins. Get that little rainbow shininess in there. Um, then we've got uh, Yadier Molina. Yeah, you're Molina. That's an awesome looking... Oh, he looks like, oh, I'm going to hit this out of the ballpark. <laughs> kind of look there. And then uh, Andrew Miller with the St. Louis Cardinals. Andrew Miller with the St. Louis Cardinals. Okay. Oh, and just... Oh, that's right. I think these are a lot of gold border. So there's the... I'll, I'll kind of point that out when we get there. So, in the foil cards, there's two variations. You have the, the gold rainbow foils, which are uh, shorter print than the base uh, rainbow foils. Not that the rainbow foils are easy to find. They're harder to find, too. But the gold, the gold ones, that's what these are. These are the golds here. Okay. So, we're going to go through these golds here. And then we get into, I think, the silvers or the or the base base ones. So it's pretty much gold and silver for the uh, the, the rainbow foils. We got Matt Olson with the Oakland A's. We've got the like father, like or no, this is the the game's best talk shop, Christian and Nolan. All right, and then now we are getting into uh, the silvers. So let me do another switcheroo here. These are the golds over here. These are the gold foils. Now we're going to do the silver foils here. We got the Abraham Toro, all right, with the Houston Astros. We've got the Carlos Santana. Again, these are the, the silver border, pretty much. Okay. And uh, this is what I want to, I want to try and find the gold, the gold, gold border with with the gold foil here on this one. This is the one I'm trying to find the gold on this one. That would be really cool. Oh wait, these, oh these are, nope, wait a minute. These are actually a few from last year. Oh, one, two from last year. I told him I, did, I just wanted the 2020s. But we'll set that off to the side for now. Yeah, I think he's got these all mixed up. He, he wasn't paying attention when I was talking to him in the sale. But that's okay. I'll find a home for them. <laughs> uh, Orlando Arcia with the Milwaukee Brewers. I'll just have to uh, put the the two, 2019s off to the other side here. Wade Miley with the Houston Astros. Then we've got uh, Hector Neris with the Philadelphia Phillies. And they're all mixed up here. Dustin Fowler with the Oakland Athletics. 
Um, Kyle Hendricks with the Chicago Cubs. Yeah, he's get, just got them all mixed up there. And then uh, Michael Brantley with the Houston Astros. Uh, Wade Davis with the Colorado Rockies. 2020s and 2019s mixed in here. That's why I was thinking it should have been a little bit cheaper because I only wanted the 2020s. But that's okay, Clay. That's okay. I can use these uh, fall rainbow cards for uh, an up-and-coming production, let's say that. <laughs> Starlin Marte with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Um, Patrick Corbin with the Washington Nationals. Uh, Willie Adamas with the Tampa Bay Rays. Then we got Aaron Nola. Aaron Nola with the Philadelphia Phillies. Uh, Jesse Winkler with the Cincinnati Reds. Um, Daniel Polka with the Chicago White Sox. Then we've got uh, Jose Urena with the Miami Marlins. We've got uh, Andrew Chafin with the Arizona Diamondbacks. We've got Jorge Soler with the Kansas City Royals. We've got Cesar Hernandez with the Philadelphia Phillies. Let's see. Keep telling you put the numbers and sets you need somewhere on YouTube channel. That way you can get more exposure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm waiting until I have lesser to, to look for because I don't want to put up a massive list for these cards. But uh, that way you can get more exposure. But I don't want to expose myself there, Robert. <laughs> I'm sure you understand what I just said. <laughs> Anthony Santander with, uh, with the Baltimore Orioles. Adam Frazier with the Pittsburgh Pirates, Hector Neris, with the Philadelphia Phillies, um, Alberto Mondese with the Kansas City Royals, Alex Colome with the Chicago White Sox, um, Ken Giles, Ken Giles with the Toronto Blue Jays, we got Mike Fears with the Oakland Athletics, getting a full stand here, um, Daniel Meganen with the Oakland Athletics. Um, Andrew Miller with the St. Louis Cardinals. Um, Travis Dimitri with the Detroit Tigers. Uh, Mike Clevenger with the Cleveland Indians. Uh, Jesse Aguilar with the Tampa Bay Rays. Uh, Matt Barnes with the Boston Red Sox. And Andrew Benatendi. Oh, my word. Ethan's Elvis covers him more. His PC. But he, he probably has this one, I would think. I know he, he likes the big time cards. The expensive cards for Andrew Benatendi. But cool nonetheless. Not too bad. What, what did we get? One, two, three, four, five. Five foil cards from last, last year. That's okay. I know exactly where I'll put them. Give me a second here. Add these into my separation there, into my production line there. And so now, boom. So we've got the gold, the gold serial number 2020 cards there. We've got the, the shorter print gold cards, which I got a few of those. That's nice. And then we've got the uh, the silver foils. Here, let me do these. I'm going to reverse these a little bit since these go in the same set sort. These go in a separate box for a sort for the 2020s. And now we're going to look at the, the USA Baseball. Stars and Stripes. Red, white, and blue. Hint, hint. <laughs> Red, white, and blue. So this is the Collegiate National Team cards. Okay. These, uh, I think these are probably all 
these are the base cards probably for all these. Oh, there's a checklist card. Oh, that's a team card. USA Baseball Team. But I think these are all just all just bases, which is fine. Boom, 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 boom. Let's see, how many of these do I got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. 20, 20, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. Got 32 of the stars and stripes. Coolness, coolness. All right, so here we go. Um, just gonna go through these real quick and the, the player names, okay? So this is the stars and stripes Panini product from 2020. So these are all brand new 2020 products. Hint, hint, red, white, and blue 2020 products. <laughs> um, USA Baseball, Bur uh, Burl Caraway. All right, just gonna go through all these. M Max Meyer. All right, Patrick Bailey. Um, Alec Burleson, Alec Burleson. Um, Will Wilson. Uh, Lucas Dunn, Austin Martin, uh, Luke Waddell, uh, Shea Langoliers, uh, Bryson Stott, uh, Cade Cavilli, Cade Cavilli, Chris McMahon, all right, uh, Cade Cavelli, I think that's a duplicate there. Probably do have some duplicates here, and that's fine. Um, Anthony Volpe. Uh, Riley Green. Um, Mick Abel. Um, Robert Hassel. Uh, Nate Savino. Corbin Carroll. Austin Hendrick, Hunter Haas. That's the uh, 2019 checklist. All right, 2019 checklist there. I'll just put that one right there like that. Uh, Drew Bowser. on the packaging and stuff or on the sorry about that just want to check something real quick there just the way they were looking for me uh nate savino aleandro rosario uh not in red five it gets only 1959-1960 and cleveland indians sure you do we all have a bit of adam in our dna Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Keep telling you, put the numbers and sets you need somewhere on your YouTube channel. That way you can get more exposure. Um, maybe what I'll do is, Robert, I'll put a post up for um, some of the cards I'm looking for. Um, maybe it's a project I'll work on to either tonight or tomorrow. And then I'll put it on my um, community tab. So again, I do put different posts in my community tab. And that maybe that's where, and then I can tell you guys that I've got a list on my community tab of cards I'm looking for to complete some of my uh, 2020 sets. I can probably do that. And that way I'll put that up there too for some of the uh, uh, miscellaneous cards I'm looking for also for like uh, the different sets like the uh, Decades Now, the Home Run Challenge cards. Um different things like that the Vladimir Guerrero Jr. subset so yeah Alejandro Rosario um, Lucas Gordon uh, Dylan Lena uh, Spencer Butt uh, Joseph Brown uh, Stephen Millam uh, 
Colton Wombles and Duke Ekstrom or Ek Ekstrom is it right Ekstrom and then I'll put this one right in front here the stars and stripes checklist this has got to be just one of the checklists yeah I don't know for sure how many cards are in this set for sure I'm going to leave that one right there, and that shows you the different cards I did get from Clay Don't Play. I was at his sale last week when he did a, a little sale there. Wasn't going to show. Well, I, I, I told him I would try to make it, and did make it for near the tail end of it and stuff, but ended up getting a few products from him. So that's these ones right here. So other than that, I think that's about the only thing I have left here today. Outside of being, if you guys would want to open up a uh, 20, 2020 preview mystery pack, I've got five left. I've got number one, two, four, six, and eight left. I've got one, two, four, six, and eight left out of my mystery packs. And um, just give you a little preview pretty much for sure just look at my past couple videos um i believe it was saturday and tuesday's stream um i believe it was tuesday right robert where you bought that second mystery pack from me um i feel your pain down I, the yard work never ends yeah the older we get the harder it is but you know what I've decided this summer, if everything works out right, this is going to rain this week when it's dry again. Every other week, I'm going to cut the grass. If I do that faithfully, I'll keep up with the grass so it doesn't get too bad. But it's going to be raining for the next week here, so hopefully the, rain, the, the grass and the weeds don't grow too much. But other than that, I think that'll pretty much cover what I had planned today. I know this is another shorter stream. Yesterday's went a little bit longer because we had the baseball card set to go through. But other than that, um, I can't think of anything else. Oh, oh, that's right. I was going to go over this real quick. So you do know um, for the pre-sale for the 2020 red, white, and blue mystery packs, this is a uh, pre-sale for, and then what I've list is your the channel name. Uh, if you do, I'll pray for rain for the greater Seattle area. No, 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 I don't want rain. I don't like the rain. I mean, it's okay, but I'd rather it be sunny and warm. Because that means if it's cooler, then I have to put socks on to keep my feet warm. <laughs> had to do that this morning. My feet were getting cold, so I had to put socks on to keep my feet warm. But anyway... This is just my, my list for all 51 packs for my 2020 Series 1 Mystery Pack sale coming up. 2020 Red, White, and Blue Mystery Pack Series 1 Summer Edition. Okay, so as you can see, they are red, white, and blue. And I've got number 3 reserved for Chuck Dupree. Number 5 reserved for Robert Posada. Got to do it that way for another Robert in the channel. And then we've got number 13 reserve for Chuck Dupree. And then I've got a uh, number 25 reserve for Robert Hone. Not Robert Posada, Robert Hone. And then uh, number 43 is reserved for uh, Chuck Dupree. But other than that, all of the other spaces are open. Um, you can reserve a spot if you are well, if you are going to actually purchase it, the spot when we do the opening on July 4th, okay? On July 4th, it will be a morning sale. I will be starting at 10 a.m. sharp. So I'll probably pop on just a little bit before 10 a.m. on uh, Saturday, the 4th of July, okay? But um, at any time, all you have to do is either let me know in the chat if you want to reserve a red, white, and blue mystery pack, if you do want to reserve a red, white, and blue mystery pack, all you have to do is let me know and I'll put you in for it. Okay, 
So that's one of the other things I did want to touch base with on the channel here. Okay. So other than that, I can't think of anything else to go over today. I'm surprised. Kevin's ministry and more. I haven't seen him around the channels in a couple days. And hopefully he's doing well. <clears throat> I know earlier this week, him and his wife did a uh, a pack war for, I can't remember, was that a Bowman product? Or it was just a, a, a box. They did a pack war. And I think it was the first, well, I won't spoil it if you haven't watched it yet. I won't spoil his video. He posted up the video. I don't think he did it live, but he created the video and then posted it up on his channel. But again, the the mystery baseball packs I do have currently, number one, two, four, six, and eight, is still available for the preview series. And the preview series does have to sell out before we would definitely lock in going to the uh, 2020 um, series one, red, white, and blue summer edition, which will have 51 mystery packs that I'll have for sale. Um, Robert Hone, sunny and warm, come visit my friend. I've got sunny and warm. <laughs> All right, Robert. So other than that, I think I'm going to get ready to wrap things up for today. Did not turn out to be a super long stream, but I did go over an hour. It's always my goal to at least provide an hour of entertainment for you guys each and every day that I do a live stream depending on what's on the schedule for everything. Um, it will be good. So we are good today. So I'm going to go ahead and get ready and turn the camera around real quick here. Uh, do my signature sign off here and get ready to wrap things up for today, okay? So let me turn the camera around. So you guys can see me. I'm here. I'm here. All right. So um, in case you were wondering, you could probably see some changes to the back of me here, right here. This is uh, this here is my this is my production uh, sorting process for my uh, my uh, 2020. Uh, series one red white and blue uh, mystery packs for July the July 4th sale so I'm sorting all my cards in this these filing cabinets here that I picked up uh, about a year or so ago didn't know what I was going to use it for and now I guess in for, uh, in foresight I know why I got that I tried to sell it in the garage sale last last year last summer and it did not sell now I know why because I needed it for my sorting process for my, uh, my, my new mystery pack product coming out July 4th. So that's where I'm sorting all my cards, getting things ready, uh, making sure I have all my slabs in place, and everything that's going to be in the mystery packs again. Um, so, And then, just so you do know, I am wearing my Hall of Fame Mariners t-shirt. That's is my usual t-shirt or something similar that I wear on my Hall of Fame Fridays, in case you're wondering. But I'm gonna go ahead and do a signature sign off here and go ahead and wrap things up today. I've had Cardinals Fan 1990 here, uh, Robert Hone and Cards in My Car with Robert Posada were my faithful three that were in the channel today. Do appreciate you guys very much. Appreciate you being here. And a matter of fact, um, I'm going to give Cardinals fan 1990 and Robert Hone, since you guys were my three lonely onlys here throughout um, this stream, uh, bonus entries into the wheel. So let me do Cardinals fan real quick. And Robert Hone. Right, and then I'm gonna save it. So you guys being my 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 threesome my my th lonely only three in the live stream that were commenting, 
you guys just got a bonus entry into into my wheel of names actually since I'm giving the bonus entries Robert you just earned one yourself you were the first in the chat but you also get a bonus entry today because that's the way I rock and roll will never be announced it'll just be a spur of the moment thing but I wanted to add you guys in to my wheel of names let me turn it around real quick so you can see the wheel is growing in numbers here you can see my wheel is growing in numbers. You might be able to see the wheel in there with your name on it at least once or twice or three times or as it may appear. But as I'm getting this saved real quick so I don't lose anything. Interesting. Sorry about that. Uh, for now, I guess I'll just leave it at at that for now. Okay. So, bum bum bum. I'm gonna save that. Bum bum bum. There. All right. Go back to my screen here. So I'm going to again do my sign off and then go ahead and wrap things up for today this has been donald blumdahl hall of fame veteran sports cards and collectibles having come live to you from arlington washington in the great pacific northwest and until tomorrow you guys have a wonderful friday and we will see you tomorrow morning saturday for i don't know yet <laughs> but it'll be something and we'll do something on the channel okay hopefully i can try and find some people to buy some of these mystery packs and we can open up some mystery packs so you guys can get a sneak peek preview of what is up and coming i'm hoping some of the people that bought my mystery packs will do it and uh, show it on their channels when they do when they do get them so that um it's a way of doing a little bit of advertising for me Okay, but you guys have a great and wonderful day. Um, it is Friday, so f uh, Kevin might be doing his Fairfield Fridays. I'll try and find out from him later. I didn't do it before I went on the stream, but I hope he does his Fairfield Fridays still, at least as a once a week baseball card video live. But we will see. All right, so you guys take care. Have a wonderful weekend if I don't see you tomorrow, and take care. All right, bye for now, and you guys have a great and wonderful day, okay? Let me turn my camera around real quick and get ready to log off here.